Hi, my little friends. So I'm back for chapter two of Goblins in the Castle by Bruce Koval. Um, if you remember, our main hero um, had gone down the secret stairway and he had found the hidden room. And we're about to meet Mrs. Ailing's favorite character of all time, Igor. And chapter two is actually titled Igor. Boo! I screamed and jumped into the air, then landed on the floor with a thump. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it would beat its way out of my chest, my hands trembling so violently I could not push myself off the floor. About three feet away from me, a strange-looking person rolled on the floor, shaking with laughter. His snorts echoed wildly from the stone walls. After a while, the man, if man he was, caught his breath and pushed himself to a sitting position. He had huge, deep-set eyes and a balding head that glowed softly in the torchlight. His nose looked as if it had once been squashed, for it spread broadly across his face, most of which was covered by a huge black beard that hung halfway to his knees. A large hump rose from the upper right side of his back. He wore an old fur coat that reached almost to his feet, which were covered by battered boots laced with thick stripes of leather. Of leather. Next to him lay a lumpy brown something. Still chuckling, he pointed at me and said, Good joke on you, boy. His voice was low and gravelly. I pushed myself to my knees. Who are you? I asked. What are you doing here? What do you... The stranger stopped snorting. Me, Igor. Igor. Igor live here. Igor always live here. What do you mean, always? I've lived here for 11 years and I've never seen you. He smiled, displaying a set of crooked yellow teeth. You are baby in this castle. Igor been here more than... He stopped and began to count on his fingers. Finally, he looked up and said, More than 600 years. It was my turn to snort. No one has lived anywhere for 600 years. People die before they get that old. Igor shrugged, causing his hump to shift like someone rolling under a blanket. Igor done that before. Not much fun. Grabbing one of the thick, rusty chains that hung from the wall, he pulled himself to his feet. The hump caused him to stoop, so he was only a little taller than me. Reaching down, he picked up the brown something that had been lying beside him. What's that? I asked, climbing to my feet as well. Igor's bear he replied, swinging it through the air and whacking me on the head. Hey, I yelled, expecting it to hurt. It didn't. Whatever this bear was, it was soft. See, said Igor proudly, bear good for popping. Can I look at it? I asked, holding out my hands. Igor stared at me. No popping? He warned. I shook my head. No bopping. I promise, not bothering to add that I would have been terrified of trying to bop him. Igor handed me the bear. I had never seen anything like it. Between two and three feet high, it was made of fur sewn together with crude stitches and stuffed with something soft. It was like a doll, only shaped like a bear instead of a human. Where did you get this? I asked. Made it, said Igor, reaching out to take it back. I let go reluctantly. The bear was nice to hold. Tucking the bear under his arm, Igor moved a few steps away. His left boot was twisted sideways, and it dragged behind him, giving him an odd, shuffling gait. How did you get here? I asked. Igor always been here, he said with another of those shrugs. This Igor's home. Surely you weren't born here. Born? Igor wrinkled his brow as if he didn't understand. Then he smiled. Oh, born. No, Igor not born here. Don't think Igor was born. Igor just is. Igor just here. Clearly, I wasn't going to get anywhere with this line of questioning. Where do you get your food? I asked. Take it. I don't know what prompted me to get indignant about that, but I did. I think I had better tell the Baron about you, I said. You live in his castle without his knowing. You steal his food. He's not going to like this. I regretted the remark the moment I made it. For one thing, the Baron could spare the food. For another, Igor swung to face me with a look that made me want to melt into the stones of the floor. Stupid boy, he cried, shaking his bear at me. You not tell Baron, you not tell anyone, or Igor fix you good. I shivered. Igor got to eat, he continued in a voice like a growl. Igor got to live. Igor live here. Only food in dungeon is mushrooms and little critters. Igor need more than that, so Igor take food. That part of the deal. What deal? Igor got job. Igor do job. Igor get food. What is your job? Igor watch things. What things? He put a crooked finger to his lips and shook his head. Old Baron say, Igor, if you know what good for you, keep your mouth shut. Igor, know what good for Igor. Igor, keep mouth shut. Good keep mouth shut, too, if boy know what good for him. My name, Willie. 
My name is William, I said, inching my way toward the door, and I won't tell anyone about you, I promise. Wait, said Igor, don't go. Stay and talk to Igor. He put his face close to mine and grinned. Igor like talking to William. Though he scared me, I liked talking to Igor, too. I had almost convinced myself to stay when he got an odd look on his face. Furring his brow, he whispered, William, hear that? I listened and felt a chill. Something was moving in the darkness beyond Igor's cell. Go, William, he cried. Go now, run fast, come back later. Wait, I said, what's going on? Will you be all right? Go, cried Igor. This is Igor's job. William, go now. Without waiting to see if I had done as he commanded, he went shuffling down the corridor, dragging his bear by a back leg. Soon he had disappeared in the darkness. Okay, my friends, I'll have an assignment for you on Seesaw, or if you're just watching this on my YouTube channel, I hope you enjoyed it. Check in for uh, next week for Chapter 3 of Goblins in the Castle by Bruce Koval.